Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 3 vs 3 on Volcano and they're going to be showing off the new 11th Parachute Division which was added in the latest Chiché update. Um, it's a French division which has very strong infantry and a bunch of other interesting units. So let's have a quick look at what we've got going here. I've got my Gazelle Cannon that's moving forwards surveying the area. We've got some of these HGMs moving up to these buildings, Milan 2s. Milan teams, or HGM teams in general, can move into buildings now, which is really helpful. And I've also got some of these P4 Milans, which are the Jeeps that have Milans on them as well. I've also got some Legionnaire Para and the Sapo Para, and I've got the AML 60s here as well to provide some extra support. On the left at the start, I did bring in my Mirage, and that has already shot down one helicopter, one of these MI-8Ts. Going to be able to take out the other MI-8T there on the ground as well. And now I'm going for the MiG, the MiG-23MF, looking to shoot that down. I do have the VR VLRA Pamela. This is a Mistral platform on the back of a truck, with the MiG-29 coming in. It's a very accurate aircraft, and goodbye to the Mirage. Those air engagements always look really awesome. Anyway, continuing with my deployment here, I've got two more P4 Milans. We've got two more Milan 2s in the buildings, and then on the left-hand side, more Sapo Pada and Legionnaire Pada with an AML-60. So I pretty much did a similar combination on both sides. So I've got a couple Flamer infantry. I think one's already died, though, here, and then the Legionnaires with the AML-60 for fire support. Um, HGMs covering the open and then same deal on the left. So the way that this division really works is it relies quite a lot on infantry dominance and then using it, the positions that it gains from that to flank units using HGMs and light vehicles. So at the moment you can see my HGM just kind of covering the open ground. They are shooting at this transport here which did have a unit inside it so that's a good kill uh, but you do need to be careful that you don't use up too many Asia gems in those sorts of engagements because you leave yourself vulnerable to like this for example where there's a couple of t62s and if you run out of milan ammo then you're going to be in trouble anyway the aml 60 here finding some alf color going to be able to take them out i really am a big fan of these AMLs, they are fantastic infantry fire support at close range as long as you're actually using them with your infantry and not letting them get ahead of themselves. We're going to constantly get bombed by these uh, MiG-21s. We are up against uh, the KDA Bezuk Airfoot, so relies quite heavily on its aircraft. Also pretty good infantry with the like KDA Schutzen, so I do need to be a bit careful of that. He's moving forwards with his pioneers with flamethrowers as well. So my sappers are going to have to meet their match there. But the Legionnaire Pala should push it in our favour. And I've also got the Apalas on the Legionnaires here to deal with any vehicles like those PT-76s, for example. So off to a relatively good start positionally on this map. I control the left side forest. I control the right side forest. I'm putting pressure towards their command sector. And we're at a plus two overall. So things are going okay. Bringing up some Pallet SAS. These are decent at close range and they provide me recon, which is useful for my HGMs. And I've also got a leader now coming up to capture this sector. Jaguar are going to be coming in with the bombing strike. I want to basically give myself the advantage against the pioneers and just killing them straight off like that is fantastic. The only issue, however, is that KDA does have those lovely auto cannon uh, AA vehicles and also the MiG-29 comes in there from the 35th and shoots down my aircraft. And yeah, those MiG-29s super accurate once they get in range. They do struggle with range against longer range units like Eagles and stuff but otherwise very very accurate. Now here, a little bit of a mistake on my part. I let the Legionnaires and the Sappers get too far ahead of themselves. And that allows Arcturius here to move up a Mi-8MT, which is going to absolutely blitz my Legionnaires. Takes them out very, very quickly. 
I bring in the Mirages. They're going to be able to get on the back of the MiG-29. And I'm very unlucky not to shoot that down. Originally, I brought them in to take care of these helicopters on the left-hand side. But with the MiG-29 flying over the head, it was important that I engage that. My aircraft are going to get out as well, which is lucky for me. But I do feel like I should have gotten that MiG-29 kill. New Milan's firing away. You see I've got my logistics truck here. I'm going to be moving it back round though to help the infantry and keep them topped off. This is one thing that's super important with this division because you are so reliant on your infantry. Making sure you have the supply to keep them at full strength is very important. So I'm moving for round the VLRA logistics truck and we're going to be trying to get these back to max strength. And the one thing that makes these infantry really strong is the fact that they have a lot of veterancy. So the Legionnaire Para, without the leader nearby, still has three vet. So really, really strong squads. Same with like the Para SAS, I believe. So you're not required to have leaders nearby to increase the effectiveness of your infantry. Which is something that people kind of forget to do, I feel, in this game. Like, veterancy, particularly the jump from 2-vet to 3-vet in this game, seems to be quite dramatic when it comes to infantry on infantry engagements. But making sure you have that advantage in your favor is very important. I'm Mistral here, trying to move across, get into line of sight of the MI-8T, but I don't want it to be walking out in the open. I'm going to have to reinforce this because the MI-8 did manage to kill a bunch of my units. So I've got another Legionnaire pallet on the way. Got another Mistral that's heading over there. And in the meantime, going to be bringing in a Jaguar with the Seed Missile. These Jaguars are so hit or miss. It's like a 50-50 dice roll every time you bring one of these. It's not even 50-50 technically because it's 45% accurate. But it's 140 points. If you bring in two at the same time, they can sometimes get the job done. But the plan really with this is just to try and get rid of any units like that Osa back there. And then I'm happy to bring in my air-to-air -air units and take down the MI-8. The MiG-23 coming in, gets hit by two Mistral shots, goes down straight away. My Mirage that I bring in, actually not needed in the end to shoot that down. And now I'm just trying to micro it so that I'm ready to engage the MiG-29 if that comes forwards. And also I'll be looking at potentially trying to take out the MI-8 here at some point. But I do know that the OS is there. We know that the flat SFL is on the right hand side. This is the twin auto cannon unit I was talking about. Very, very strong. Seems to do very well, even against like high seed. Mistral though, going to be dealing with the MI8 for me, which is good. If it can hit, that is. Managed to get the second one to jump over and help it out. A goodbye, MI8T. <laughs> The effects on this are just so cool. When, when you see a helicopter get hit like that and fall out of the sky, it's just very, very awesome. Yeah, I'm looking very healthy in the middle. Things have, however, gone back to 50-50 on the score since uh, Turd Burglar, <laughs> I just realized what his name was, has managed to capture this and he's now also captured this. So it's plus two in our opponent's favor. But I'm still holding a, a decent position here. And we're, we're capturing this, which is good. Uh, this is an advantage for us. Uh, if I can get a leader over to the left side and start to capture that as well, that would be great. So what I'm going to be doing is bringing up a couple of these ERC-90s. The ERCs are good for dealing with like light to medium armor. And then I've also got a group of Antija, which is the twin Apalas squad. And I've also got some Puma Pirates, so that they can help with enemy infantry and also enemy helicopters and stuff if they turn up. The MiG-21's coming in again though for these bombs. I was having a real hard time shooting these down. My Mirages, or Mistral, sorry, a lot of times were missing and they probably should have hit. I do finally take one down there, which is good. But I think potentially with KDA Bezwerk Alpha, you can actually get quite a lot of those, so. Yeah. Anyway, Legionnaire Pala using the Apalas to take out all of those vehicles for us 
and I've got the VLRA there ready to resupply them straight away. And, and again, resupply, I can't stress how important it is for this division. Resupply is very important for the HGMs, since you only get like six and these cars only get four. And same with any squad that has an Apalus because they only get four ammo on the Legionnaire Pada. So making sure you have that to resupply those is super important. Otherwise, you're going to get overrun by light vehicles throughout the game. The other thing, of course, is just keeping up the strength of your units so that in a situation like this, I would be able to match numbers. Of course, I've already lost a bunch of squads and they are outnumbering me, so I'm going to lose. And that's kind of just the way things are right now in uh, Warner. If you have, like, even though these are supposed to be, like, really elite squads, the KDA shoots and can just run them down with superior numbers. In this case, Arcturius does have the three vet on his mod shoot zone, so it makes sense that they are matching up quite nicely. So I'm going to have to use a Jaguar here to get some bombs on target and help out. And I'm trying to get my Puma Pirates into position to give a hand as well. Uh, meanwhile, I have brought up the 105mm artillery, and this is going to help us indirect fire units that I can't otherwise deal with. Uh, so, for example, this flat SFL, I could maybe try and move up an HGM to take it out, but as soon as I do, he's going to move it. So I'm going to be arsing it, and again, he's going to move it, but it means that I could get another chance to have a go at it, even if it is out of line of sight in the future. So Pada SAS is going to be engaging the Mutschutzen. It's a 3-vet versus a 3-vet here, and I've also got the Spetsnaz now coming in from the KDA, so that Pada is not having a good time. And Arcturius did a good job of keeping the veterancy up on these Junets, and uh, uses that to his advantage just as much as I'm trying to do, which kind of cancels out the benefit of my superior infantry for the most part. So I'm going to have to move my leader backwards. Got some more infantry coming in. This is one problem that you will have whenever you play against KDA, is that their infantry can get very overwhelming. For the same reason that this division's units can also get overwhelming sometimes, and that's due to like resupplying the large squads. Now KDA it benefits a lot more because their squads are larger, particularly like the KDA Schutzen themselves are 14-man squads. So if you're able to use supply to take them from like a five-man squad back up to a 14-man squad you're getting a lot of value out of those units and the and the thing is they're only going to continue in their amount of experience and KDA Schutzen naturally start with low veterancy so the more they fight the better they get and if you manage to resupply them then yeah that's great now the Flyer SFL moves forwards here. I noticed just a little bit too late with the second pirate. And I'm going to move forwards my ERC-90 to try and help take that out. Unfortunately, Milan 2 is going to whiff. The ERC-90 misses. And yeah, not in, a, not in the best shape. The Milan 2 is trying to control the open here. We've got the SU-22s coming in, MiG-21 coming in. Do you manage to shoot down the SU-22 and I've also got the Mirage F1C on the case of the MiG-21. Hoping to shoot that down but unfortunately miss the last shot there. So Mirage is going to try and take out the SU-24. Managed to miss that shot as well. <laughs> and things are not going too great. But we are going to be able to at least take down the MiG. That's something. And the ERC with the Milan 2 going to be taking out the Flat SFL. I've got plenty more infantry coming in here now, including a leader to make sure that my Sapir Para are also three vet. And the other good thing about having a leader here is when I eventually counter push through the trees, I can put pressure onto the enemy sector. So that was what I was going to try and do there. This side, I'm very limited in number. I've let more squads die than I should have so far. A good kill by the ERC. Takes out another flat SFL. Removing those from play is very useful. A MiG-21 comes in there for the bombing strike. He was probably looking for the CV snipe, but I was already moving the Zeppo Pada back forwards. And so that ends up getting shot down. This is a mistake that I actually see a lot of players make, is they leave their command in the corner of a sector. And that can be very predictable. Whereas if you have it like halfway up the sector, people don't expect it. So 
That is definitely something you can take advantage of in order to stop yourself being command sniped. Just bear in mind that anything in the same position will also get hit, so this Mistral's having a bit of a hard time. But meanwhile, on this left side, dealing with the KDA should send like all of the smoke. This is from all the napalm. <laughs> Oh, that, just, that looks so cool. Obviously, IRL, the blades would be pushing the smoke around, but <laughs> the effects still look freaking awesome. And to have smoke effects like that in a game would be uh, <laughs> very taxing on your computer. So, anyway, still looks awesome to see the Black Hawk. And the Black Hawk's now taking a lot of punishment from the light arms fire on the ground. Trying to get out of there. <laughs> or at least get its M240s on target. But going to end up getting shot down. Yeah, coming in with the two F111s. Trying to delete some of this infantry for us. It manages to whiff both of the <laughs> pioneers. So they are still alive. My Jaguar going to come in and finish the job on one of those at least. These Jaguars are very reliable in their bombs. Unfortunately, they do have to go deep in order to get those reliable bombing strikes, so they end up getting shot down very frequently if your opponent has decent enough AA. But as you can see, as a team, we're in a bit of a bad spot. Uh, plus four for the opponents right now. Um, right side's under their control, left side's contested, so things aren't looking too great. It's going to be difficult for me to get any form of command into this sector, I believe. Though I, ha I don't think I've ever really tried to maybe put a command here somewhere. Like, that might actually work, now I think about it. Anyway, piling up the infantry, looking for the push through so that I can counter count this sector. That was what I was looking to do. That's why I brought in more of these AML-60s and the ERC Sage. So these, again, really, really nice units. Uh, just because they provide the HE fire from their main gun, the 60 mil, and they also have the 50 cal. And 50 cals are notoriously good right now. The enemy infantry squad coming in there in the truck, lucky to be missed by the Milan 2. Big push coming through though. Is starting to work out. Managed to build up a critical mass here of infantry and that is kind of what you need to do but then you have to also try and avoid like bombing strikes thankfully so far I've probably dealt with most of the MiG 21s now so there's a lot less of that coming in like the deadly fast bombing strikes but it's still taking time and it's plus two in their favor still so it's just a race to get the commander into the enemy sector. So that's what I'm trying to do. Meanwhile, the ERC is kind of cleaning out all of these units in the open, which is great. And I'm going to make sure to move forwards these Mistrals so this MI-8 with its 57mm rockets can't just delete my infantry like happened before. But Mirage 2000 coming in with the strafing run onto that MI-8 is going to be able to take it down. It's likely that I would lose that, but it's worth it to allow my infantry to push forwards. And in this case, it almost got away. So I wasn't too bad. Jaguar's going to come over, but the Flyer Safel doesn't use radar, so it gets lots of damage off, and then one missile just shoots it out of the sky. Both of those aircraft going down. Now making the push into the far side here. My Sapper Padder absolutely annihilating enemy infantry but I need to keep this ERC-90 alive that's the main thing I need to do because that's going to be useful for taking out the flat SFL and also the book back here my infantry can take care of the KDA shoots and easy peasy look at that absolutely deleting them and then meanwhile my leader is just running to the closest corner on that sector to try and cancel things out it's a little too late. I ended up getting my command killed here as well. And that's going to be game. And after 20 minutes, it is a minor defeat. 3,616 kills.
to 2,925 losses, quite an attritional attack. Um, definitely always going to be at the moment with the infantry mechanics in the game. But I do feel like this division has a big leg up over other elite infantry, uh, just due to like numbers of elite infantry that you can bring in. And also the combination of the Appalas with other close range Napalm infantry. So yeah, I think this division is pretty good. I think this uh, replay, whilst it's short, showed off the playstyle of this division. You use the HGMs to control the open ground whilst conquering the closer range engagements. So either in a town, in the trees, you know, that's where this division really shines. And then you use those flanking positions to take ground and kind of project influence over the open ground with more ATGMs gems and, and light vehicles that can go for those side shots. So that's really how this works. And I think this was the perfect game to demonstrate it. Yeah, again, whilst it was short, there was certainly cool moments. And I always love watching the uh, effects in the replay. I think it's really cool. Kills and losses wise, Legionnaire Pala doing well to clean up a lot of these light vehicles for us. Uh, the Mistrals kind of sucked at first, but ended up getting quite a few kills in the end. MiG-23, MiG-21, another MiG-23 there. This one taking out the SU-22 and the MiG-23. Uh, the Sapper Pala taking out Double Much Schutzen, taking out Spetsnaz Pioneer Flam. Like, this is the kills that you want to see from these Sapper Pala. The main thing you want to do, though, is just make sure they stay alive so that they can continue to get those kills. So again, supply really, really important in this division. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at the 11th Parachute Division. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.